Hi everybody. I have not done a beginner's tutorial in forever, so I figured I would just throw one out there on a day this not Friday. So, just surprise! <laughs> so for this one we're going to be doing this cute little mandala pattern. It's just on a 4x4 four four canvas. But you could use cardboard, you could use anything you want, but I thought it turned out cute. So let's get to it. For this video, I think I'm going to stick to just four sizes, which is my toothpick, my Q-tip, a pencil eraser, and then this end of a pen. Because I think that everybody will have those. So let's get on to our tutorial. I decided to just do a little four inch canvas just because I figure if you're new you're not going to make something big. So this is four by four. And you are going to need either a paintbrush or a sponge or some way to get your background color on here. And I'm just going to paint this black. This is just Deco Art Lamp Ebony Black, but any black paint you can use. Okay, so while this is drying, I'm going to talk a few more things. Now, when I first started, this is what I painted on. This is actually a cereal box that I cut. This is four by four. And I would just paint this black. And you gotta put like a really nice coating on it and it will warp when you paint it. As, as it gets wet, this will bend like this. But as it dries, it usually will flatten out. And if it doesn't, I'd put it under books or whatever to keep it flat for a day. And then I would paint on it. And then it's just basically disposable and practice. And if you like it, they make little frames you could buy and you could just put this in a frame and nobody would even know it's cardboard. And it, so don't be afraid to just practice on something because it's the only way you're gonna learn. So this is what I used. You don't need to have a canvas like this. If you don't, just cut up a piece of, any piece of cardboard will do. Oh, and another thing, here is my brush that I use to paint this always, and I repeat always. Go rinse out your brush while you're waiting for this to dry. Because if you let this just sit and glob on, it will never come clean. And I've used the same brush just for backgrounds for like a year, and it has no problem. But I always take the time to go and rinse this out. Or I'll have like a cup of water and I'll just stick it in there. And then when I get a chance, I'll take it into the other uh, room and rinse it out in the sink to keep this nice and clean. Because my waste brushes. Okay, so this is pretty much dry. There's a couple spots there, but not bad. Now, to start out, I always tell everybody to try and base your dots off of your other dots placement. Because... Chalk pencils and stuff like that that you mark your guidelines with are hard to remove. Some of them you can remove pretty easily with water and a Q-tip. But even the best ones, at times you're not going to get it off and you're going to have to touch it up. So the better you get it at your placement of the dots, the better off you're going to be. So to start out, this is just a regular ruler. I'm going to just mark the center by going diagonally to the corners and just making a very small mark right there and then turning it and doing the same thing to find my center of this 4x4 four four square. Okay, so that's going to be right there. And I try and remove extra pencil it doesn't work very good but you could touch it up with some black 
don't know if you can see that mark. See it there? Okay, so what I would do is I would just take, shake your bit, bottle of black paint and grab the cap and then put your Q-tip in there and just wipe it off on the sides a little bit and then go over the top of that and just get it down to where you could see where your X is and it's not so big. You see that? And when that paint dries, you're not even going to be able to tell that I went over it with black because you got a couple coats of black on there already. So that's our center dot. That's where we're going to start. And I get black paint all over me and I just keep a baby wipe on my dust to wipe it off or you can have a, just a wet washcloth and wipe off your fingers as you go I'm a messy painter I'm just always on it's okay so here we go now we're starting out here's our tools the pencil the pen and the two smaller ones okay now I'm gonna start out with white and I put the colors in the description I used, but any white's gonna do. It doesn't really matter. And you don't have to even use these colors. You could just do the design any way you like. I use this Deco Art Americana because it's the right consistency almost every time. And we're gonna use the biggest dot we got, which is this pencil eraser and make us a center dot. And then you just wipe off your tool. And you know, I use a dry paper towel a lot of times or you could use a wet washcloth, it's up to you. The paper towel leave a little bit of residue on it. But it's not a big deal. All right. So now we're going to go in with this toothpick. And I'm going to do what I always do, which is separate this in quarters. So I go on the top and put a dot, and on the bottom, and then one dividing each of the sides. Now I judge the spacing on here. And to me, I don't know if I can get three on that side. It looks like I can only get two. So it's hard to eyeball that when you first knew. So instead, let's just split the difference and put one right into the center of each one around there. Now you can turn your design any which way you need to to see it better. It takes practice to be able to eyeball it. And I could probably fit one more dot in there, but for new people that'd be a little hard to do, so we're not going to do that. We'll just leave it like that. Now we're going to use the toothpick again, and I'm going to go with a new color, which is this carousel pink. Now any pink will do any color will do that you want to use. It doesn't matter. We're just going to have fun, play around with this, try it out. So we're going to use our toothpick in the pink and we're just going to place a dot between the other dots you just did. And you want to try and get it into that crevice, but you don't want it touching your other dots if you can help it. It'll happen occasionally if you're new. And that's okay. It's practice. There, I kind of touched on that a little bit. And I've been doing this a couple of years. So if it happens to you, don't fret over it. It's not a big deal. Now, if your colors are running into each other and it looks lousy, then I would try and take it off. But if it's just touching barely like that, I would just leave it as it is.
and there you go. So now I'm going to come in with this Q-tip end. And I'm just going to go in between those pink ones and center it over the white dot that's underneath it. And I'm going to use the sour apple green color. And I'm using these colors because Friday's video is going to have similar colors. I thought I'll make a beginner's tutorial with the same colors. So I'm going in on that larger dot. And we're just going to go above the white dot and centered between those pink dots. And turn this as you need to so you can see it. Whichever way is best for you to be able to see what you're doing. Now in this tutorial, I'm not going to do any kind of swoops, just dots, but as I make some more, I'm going to make them a little bit more complicated. So now we're going to work on walking the dots around these green ones. When I say walking the dots, that means you only dip your tool in the paint one time and you walk down. But I like to do a center dot first. I always do one dot there. And by a center dot, I mean coming out on an angle from the center. So there's one dot right on top coming out. Before I walk the dots down, I will do just a larger dot right there. And turn this however you need to. And make sure you wipe your tool off occasionally, even like this toothpick, because the more you dip into your paint, the more paint that will apply to the end of this and the bigger your dot's going to get. So between making your dots, you don't have to do it every time, but every second or third time, wipe it off again before you re-dip it. Okay, so now I have my center dot. Now I'm going to walk the dots. So you dip it once. And then you go down the side. One, two, three dots on each side. Now, we might just need to do two because I don't know how well you guys are going to be able to do three. This is little tight quarters. So let's just do every other one just to make it a little bit easier. Okay, now I'm not going to do these other ones just for the simple fact is it's tight quarters and I don't want you guys to have to try and squeeze dots in. We could just do, let's just do one dot down the side on both sides. I'm going to move up in size and go to this pen cap and this is going to be a lot bigger and I'm going to use the pink and I'm just going to go in between these and I'm going to go every other one so there's a space there and there's a space there I'm going to skip that space and go over here and then I'm going to skip the next space and go over here and skip the next space and go over here. Now, I look at that, I don't care for that, so I'm going to add the other ones in. I'm going to go here and make it just all more symmetrical. And this is all the process. I mean, don't give yourself a hard time. 
Just take your time and see what you think looks nice and go with that feeling. There. Now I like that better. Now I'm going to go in with this Q-tip end and the pink again and I'm going to just put another dot in between these. Now about this time in the pattern, you really need to start watching your paint and your palette. Because the longer the paint sits, the more it dries out. And the consistency of the paint's going to change on you. Now I don't know if you can notice it, but all this paint that I have, especially like this white, has got a film going over it. And it's very, very thick compared to what it normally is. You see how it's globbing on here? Now, you can add a little bit of water to this and thin it out a little bit and keep using this. Or you could just add a little bit more paint to your palette and continue on. It's up to you. Now, if you add too much water to this, it's going to thin your paint out and your paint's going to crack. You can get some blending mediums when you get more experience. We'll talk about blending mediums and things you can add fluid um, acrylic fuel, bleh, fluid acrylics and stuff that you can add into your paint to extend them so that they don't dry out like that. But for the sake of time, I'm just going to add some more white to my paint palette and continue on. I just wanted to tell you because you probably took a little bit longer than me and that's going to show if you just continue with that paint. All right, so now I'm going to go and on the big dots, going to use my toothpick and I'm going to put another center dot and I'm just going out from here out and putting a dot over where I can visualize the center being in relation to the center dot. I hope that makes sense to you. Now we're going to go in with that Q-tip and I'm going to put another white dot just out from that dot. Now this I'm just making up as we go along and the more you do it the better you'll get it visualizing what things are going to look like. A lot of times I have no clue what it's going to look like. I just go with it. And then I see how it turns out in the end. And sometimes I love it and sometimes I don't. But it's all the process of painting. It's just to have some fun here and enjoy the process. So now I want to bring that green in because I like to use colors multiple times throughout the pattern. It makes them feel more cohesive into the pattern. So you don't want to just use color one time in the center and then not use it again or it's going to feel out of place in your design. So what we're going to do is use the green. Now make sure you check your paint again because this has been sitting. See, my consistency is going to be off. So if you're new and you don't realize that and you go to use this, this is going to look crappy, okay? So add a little bit of water, thin it out a little bit, or pour some more paint in your palette. The choice is up to you. Now I'm going to use the bigger, the clicky end of the pen, and make another dot out with the green. Now just do your best to get it. Okay, now that one went wonky on me. So we will go through another process here. I'm going to screen this in. Now just take a wet Q-tip and twirl it. And you could pull that right off. Now let that dry a little bit before we move on. 
I just turn the canvas and by the time I get back to that, that should be nice and dry. Now I'm going to take the cotton swab thing and I'm going to put a dot of green to both sides of the white. Okay, and then I'm going to take the toothpick and I'm going to do a dot further in just to make it look like it's going down just a little bit more. Now, I'm going to use my toothpick and the white paint, and I'm going to come out from each one of those pink, these smaller pink ones here. I'm just going to do three dots coming out. Okay, so if you haven't noticed, some of my things are closer together than others. Like the spacing between these. Now, the more you practice, and the better this is going to get, where they're all going to be identical spaces between. Now, if you mapped it all out and you put guidelines, it would be a lot better. But we're eyeballing this, we're just having fun and we're learning. So we're not gonna worry about it, we're just gonna go with it. Now I'm gonna go with a bigger dot in the pink. And I'm gonna go out from those white dots we just did. But I'm gonna come in between these green dots. And the idea is I don't wanna get so close down here that the areas where it's tight, it's gonna be a problem. So we're gonna go further out and I'm going to use this end with the pink and when we make our dot we're just going to go out from those green ones and we're going to go out quite a ways from our white we're just going to try and keep it like in a circle going around here Now I'm going to walk the dots around those pink ones, I think, or maybe the green ones. Now I think the pink ones. We'll use the, the toothpick, and we're going to use white, and we're going to walk some dots around these pink ones. All right, now I'm going to top dot on these bigger pink ones here. 
with this lighter shade of pink using a Q-tip. Okay, and the whole reason I made that is because I want to use some of that out further in the design. So we're going to do, let's do, no heck. Let's use the Q-tip end again. And I'm going to do in that light pink right out from this green. And do a dot in that light pink color. And then I'm going to use this pink cap and I'm going to use that light pink and I'm going to do one more dot out. So I'm going to use the Q-tip end and the white paint. And I'm going to go one dot to each side of those lighter pink dots. And now we're going to use the toothpick and we're going to walk white dots around those using the white around these pink ones. I always make that top dot first and then I walk them. Okay, and while you still got the pink or the white in the toothpick, let's just make a dot on these light pink ones. Just add another top dot. Just with your toothpick again, using that light pink color we mixed, just make a dot on these darker ones right in the center. Okay, and now we're going to add just a touch of white to the green and lighten that up, make a lighter color green. Just so we could top dot on some of those greens. Okay, with the toothpick, I'm going to top dot on those two smaller green ones. And we're going to tap that on these bigger green ones. There. I think I like it like that. Now you could go in and you could do a lot more tap dots all over the place if you want to. That's up to you. Let me zoom it out a little bit. But this is what we ended up with and I like it. It's cute. Be a nice little gift for somebody or just 
set it in your craft room and enjoy it for yourself. Either way, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. And if you do, please like it, give it a thumbs up, and subscribe if you're not a subscriber. I would love to have you. I do a new video every Friday. I do use my Dot Mandela do-it-yourself tools. These kind of tools. And if you go to mysusmandalas.com, I have a listing of all the tools that I use. These are numbered, so I give the number and the color of every paint I'm using for the designs. And I do, sometimes I do beginner tutorials on Fridays, but for the most part I've been doing just designs that people could copy if they like to. So if you like this, let me know and I will do more of this type of tutorial. So see you later. Thanks for watching. Bye.